Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. Today I'm going to bring you some new and different yoga poses to add to your practice. I'm really excited to share this. Come on and join me on your mat. Okay, so I would recommend that you warm up before this, do some spinal movements, do some extension and flexion, some downward dog, and get a little bit of the blood flowing before you get right into it. The first one, go ahead and grab a blanket or a towel because we're gonna be on our knees and we're actually gonna be bending the back knee which will increase the pressure on the patella, the kneecap. So go ahead and set that up and come to an all fours position. So we've been here before and I like to incorporate this pose with um, practices where I'm teaching people to work on the glutes and do stuff like this. So I usually do a whole practice, we might add binds, we might do this, and then later on after that, we come to a more peak pose which has two options. So the first option would be, I'll say, okay, now come back to that kind of 90 degree pressing you had with your back foot 90 degree bend in the knee, and then maybe that back foot, pick it up and kickstand onto the thigh by the knee. And then and you can even kind of point your ball, the boy, ball joints of your feet and spread your toes here and hold. If you want to really kick it up a notch, and I recommend widening your hand stance a little bit, you can actually lift the opposite hand forward to the leg, it's, it's a hard one, to the leg that is lifting back. Ooh, it's a doozy. So reach out through the spine, get a nice little child's pose going. And let's go ahead and try that on the other side. Lift the other leg up, and as you're ready to integrate, kickstand that other foot onto the thigh, spread the toes. I don't really want you to point because I don't want you to get a cramp in the calf, but breathing here and not sagging at the low back, but supporting at the belly, <laughs> and then maybe widening the hand stance and possibly, oh, this side's even harder for me, lifting the other arm. Ooh, better take a picture fast before I fall out of that. Let's come into a child's pose, wiggle the hips a little side to side, and shake out the arms. So the next one is something that I find very, very fun, very invigorating. It gets people um, just to have, a little more joy in the practice and that feeling of freedom and you get the cardiovascular benefit, paraspinal muscles, spinal stimulation, and that is rolling. So there's a few different ways to do it. Hands kind of to the kneecaps or below. Inhale takes you back, ankles come closer to the face, rounding up and coming to seated. So some of us have done things like this, but the way that I like to change it up is to roll up and add a baby boat or a full boat, roll back, add your boat variation, and then maybe the next time roll into a chair pose, rolling back down, rounding the spine, using your exhale to come up. And there's all different variations. Some people cross their feet. Some people in order to get up will have to part their knees and push back and get a little momentum to come up. And you can always use blocks behind you to also help push off of if you want to come to that chair pose or a standing pose from rolling. All right, now we're gonna get into some even crazier stuff. Um, I would have some blocks handy for this too to try. So I would never just do this cold. Again, warming up is pretty critical. 90-90, this is great to do. 90-90, great to do, okay? External rotation, internal rotation. There's a little bit of a tilt here. We're sitting differently than we're used to. But if you integrate the arm balance with this, the lift, it really works on a lot of levels through the torso and through the hips. So you would take a one block, right? in between the legs, and then one block on the outside. Whatever leg you have forward, doesn't matter, but one block between, one on the other side. And what you're gonna attempt to do is keep the feet down and initially just lift the hips. So let's lift on an exhale and really draw in the core. Put your hands on the blocks, inhale here. Exhale, just lift the hips and keep the feet down. And come out of that. And then try that on the other side. So again, we're gonna 
take this up a notch if we want to, or we're gonna stay with this. Feet down, 90-90, hands down, inhale. Exhale, lift just the hips, draw the core musculature back and down. And I'm more the frontal core musculature. Okay, let's go to that first side. And here's where we feel the hips the next day and your students or, um, or yourself will feel the hips the next day. Really attempt to get that back knee and ankle up as you do this, as well as the front. Inhale here, exhale, press down and see if you can lift everything up and then down. Hello, and then the other side. Love this one for hip strength, even the obliques. Inhale here, exhale, press down and lift, 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 and come back down. Whenever I teach that, I make sure that I do some fire log pose or pigeon pose or something, really get into those external rotators, get into those glutes because they were really contracted. All right, coming to stand. Love this one and just recently shared it on Facebook um, because it brings in that internal and external rotation as well. So let's start in a goddess or a horse stance and settle in a little bit. And as you're ready, don't take the hips lower than the knees. Don't want that. So higher than the knees. And we'll just lift one heel and roll one knee down and in. And then up and back, back to that goddess squat. Lift the other heel, rotate down and in. And up and back. Talk about strengthening. Talk about hip work. You're getting internal rotation on one, external on the other. Now, as I've tried to explain before, it seems like we're doing a ton of internal rotation, but we're letting the pelvis turn a bit. The main thing I don't want you to do is to turn the pelvis all the way like you're doing a low knee lunge. Understand the pelvis is gonna turn a little bit, but we're attempting to keep it more forward than to the sides and do them really nice and slow. All right, let's shake that out and shake out the legs a little bit. Are you ready? Come down. <laughs> now, these variations inside plank can be done on the forearm or on the hand, it's really up to you, as well as the next uh, variation of a baby grasshopper that is less, lesser taught and lesser seen. So you can always fold over your mat if you're using that for support of your elbow, or if you're putting your hand down, you don't need to do that. So go ahead and choose on your side which one you want to do for your uh, side plank. And go ahead and integrate the ankles pressing away, the thighs working. And as you're ready, let's go ahead and come up into a side plank. Now, from here, what you probably haven't done very often is circle the pelvis around. So sometimes we circle the arm around or the upper leg around, but the pelvis. And you might want to play with staggering the feet, either top leg back or top leg forward and circle the pelvis here. Maybe lift that top arm, take it slow, and find a nice range of movement where you feel like you're getting strength, but it's not bothering the lumbar or the sides. Let's go to the other side, hallelujah, right? Forearm or hand as you're ready. Set up your side plank. You can start stacked and see how that goes, or you can start playing with, okay, how does that feel if I stagger the top foot forward? How does that feel if I take the top foot back? And then choose which is best. So for me, I'm finding that top foot forward is best. I'm gonna lift that top arm and I'm gonna slow down my circling. So this is so full body, legs are active. Um, through the entire core, and of course, the upper body. And let's come on down. Shake out your wrists, especially if you did that on your wrists. Find your breathing. And then this last one, super duper fun. I don't see it taught very often, and when I do, I don't usually see this variation. Again, forearm or hand can be done with this. I will show you on the hand as well as the forearm. So <clears throat> come on to that first side and pause for a moment, <laughs> wipe the slate clean <laughs> and be willing to just play. 
Top knee is gonna bend and you're gonna step your foot forward. Roughly the middle of your knee and kind of your second toe are pointing forward in the same direction. It's not gonna be exact, but that's sort of what we're going for. So a lot of times what I see in these baby grasshopper variations is I see it done on the hand and we reach the leg forward or maybe we use a strap and then we lean forward and we lift here. Okay, so I see that one a lot. Uh, and I will tell you that if you have trouble lifting in that, it's a transference of weight forward. So if you're reaching here and you're like, why can't I get up? Even if you're on your forearm or your hand, you transfer your whole torso, you roll to the front, more the front of the side of the hip, and that will help you lift. Okay, again, that could be done on the forearm. The variation that I wanna show you is where you do an open circuit. So instead of a closed circuit here, we're not going to reach for that lower foot. And instead, I'll show you from the forearm this time, we're gonna transfer the weight forward, lift and integrate the work of even the adductors, the inner thigh of that extended leg, and then draw maybe some circles here, both directions, and then a thread through, forward, knee bends, back behind, knee bends towards you, forward, knee, back behind. On the other side, I'll show you from the hand. Take a little break. Okay, and, oh yeah, I'm showing you from the hand. We're gonna take the leg stat, take the top foot forward. You might have to use your hand to move it up a little bit. Roughly, knee and toe pointing in the same direction. Transfer the weight forward. Really make sure you get into it, and then see if you can lift the other leg up. Maybe draw some circles. Top arm can be a hand or a waist. Draw some circles, and then threading forward, threading back. Threading forward, threading back. So again, on your hand or on your forearm, it's up to you. And I will continue to bring you some lesser done, lesser practice um, poses that aren't all just crazy arm balances that so few people can do, but these that are modifiable and in, people can integrate them um, more than like, oh, you're an upside down pretzel. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed these. Leave me some of your lesser done moves in the comments. Let me know because I am always open for change and variety and I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.